Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here are your hosts, Joe Kuzma and Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and this is the WTF edition, which could only mean one thing. Where's Terry Fletcher? Oh, there she is. Hi, Terry. Hey, how are you doing? I'm feeling especially giddy. I don't really know why. I think I actually feel... I'm not sure. Saucy might be the word that the kids use right now. (laughs) There are so many crazy things to say WTF to this week. And that's just with the Pittsburgh Steelers, which I think we can save them for last, maybe. How about we kick this right off with some other AFC North teams? Why don't we start with the Bengals and Ravens from Thursday night and... I, the Bengals, like 2-0 and 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 A.J. Green having three touchdowns and Joe Flacco and company just looking absolutely horrid, which usually the away team on Thursday night football does look pretty bad. But, wow. Um, yeah, I mean, the Ravens made the Buffalo Bills look like the worst team in the NFL, which likely they are. And then they made the Bengals look like Super Bowl champions. Well, I think that's what people forget is when they're, I mean, I don't know if you saw what was going on on media sites, because sometimes you look at them and think, you guys are paid to do this, but they sit there and they see a blowout from a, to, from a one team to another, and then they automatically say, oh, guess what? This person is going to make it to uh, the Super Bowl, and so they were, they were actually calling Ravens Super Bowl champions, and I have to laugh at Michael Irving. That guy is, I think he's losing his mind. <clears throat> Did he, he ever have it? <laughs> well, he said something to the effect that, and this is what he said, and I was like, "Did he really say this?" He said, uh, "Well, if the Ravens can put up forty-five points a game, then they're going to go to the Super Bowl." I'm like, "Well, yes. If any team puts up forty-five points a <laughs> yeah. game, they're going to the Super Bowl." I'm like, "Oh my god." That's, so. that's yeah, the exact 40 points even. I mean, that's just – you saw how unrealistic even with how high-powered the Steelers are or the Saints or, or even the Patriots. Nobody's even scoring like, you know, 30 points per game is a, a, a tall feat, let alone 40-something. I mean, good, come on, get out of here. You know what I mean? Did, they, did he forget that the Jaguars last year laid over 40 on the Ravens uh, over yeah, in I the U.K.? Think- I mean, come on. Well, and that's what he doesn't get. I mean, everybody's everybody doesn't understand that when you see some of these high scoring games or even the the back and forth that look at both sides. I mean, I know it's about the win and the W, but I mean, even our game this weekend, which we will get to, um, we still put up so many points. And then, you know, it, it's just crazy how many points are being put up and then still no wins. So. It's, it, I think the Bengals, the Bengals and the Ravens, I think that uh, it's still a too soon to call on, the, on them for right now. Yes, um, I, I'll agree with that. Uh, another shocker when it comes to scores and looking at things on paper. Well, let's first start. Let's stay within the division, and then we'll hop outside the AFC North. The Cleveland Browns, I think <laughs> – the fans that were up there were ready for the Bud Light uh, refrigerators to unlock and get their free Bud Light with the first victory of the year. If only they had a guy. If you didn't know this, folks, not only did their did their kicker miss two point after tries, two extra point attempts, the Saints go down the field, kick a field goal, they go up twenty one to eighteen, or and yeah, yeah, and Cleveland has a chance. They come back down the field. And they can tie this game, maybe force overtime and get a victory, which they should have already been almost in the driver's seat had the guy made the extra points. And he misses the field goal as well. Needless to say, Monday morning he was unemployed. Yeah, and it's interesting because last year we saw a couple of that and they weren't unemployed. And so I think people now are like, you have one job to do. (laughs) One job. And you just need to kick the ball through there. So if you can't do it, we're moving on. And, I mean, that kind of brings us to Vikings kicker. (laughs) Yeah, and I had him in fantasy. I had him in fantasy, and he's like, thanks a lot. You're cut for my team now, too. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Zimmer's response, I mean, he was replaced, too. And the media was like, you know, to Mike, Mike Zimmer's very dry. And so he basically just tells it like it is. And they said, you know, Mike, did you have a hard time with that decision? He goes, did you see the game? And then he's like, no, I didn't move on. And he just moved on to the next thing. He just, he was basically like, you know what? You don't do your job, you're cut. 
but uh, but the kickers had some trouble. I mean, our kicker had issues, um, you know, not to, you know, the game before that, but also in uh, the Rams, uh, you know, something we didn't even mention before. All pro. He, he went yeah. Down. Yeah. He went down. He's actually down for a few weeks, and the Rams are playing well. So that's that's really sad. Yeah. Greg Zerline, he got hurt at the end of last year, and I believe that's how Graham Gano got into the Pro Bowl and did, like, the kicker stuff with Chris Boswell. Poor Chris Boswell. I mean, it's still a 49-yarder. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's it's anything but money. I mean, everyone has struggled from about 50 yards, and that's the old open end zone where if the ball goes high enough, guess what? The wind is still kind of crazy in there, even though the bottom portion of that's a little more closed off now. So let's see. There was more crazy thing. Well, you said the, the Vikings, the Vikings and Packers now, they add uh, another tied game. And I forgot ever since however many years ago it's been – since uh, in the first two weeks, there's been a tie in each of the two weeks. But they tied, and in that game, wide receiver from the opponent, the Minnesota Vikings, game is at Lambeau Field. Everybody's familiar with the Lambeau Leap that the Packers players do when they score a touchdown. <laughs> they jump into the crowd in the end zone over the wall. Stefan Diggs, wide receiver for the Vikings, thinks he's going to go and do this. At Lambeau Field, goes to jump into the stands, and the fans were like, "Ah, uh-uh. they like shoved him right out of there. their arms, were right up." And it was like, it was like uh, the equivalent of baseball when they throw the home run ball back. <laughs> it was really funny. I just saw it tonight. I was like, "Oh, that is just that's just so sad." I just think it's funny when they do that, though. It's just you're, you're trying to they're trying to go in there and celebrate. It's like not at that field. That it, no, it'd be like throwing a, a terrible towel down and stamping on it. Don't do it. No, that's never worked out well for anyone. It, it's not, not anyone, anyone. Um, I mean, I don't know what else is any more surprising. I mean, the Buffalo Bills, uh, we don't expect them to win, but they still put 20 points on the Chargers. The Chargers' defense has been stinky, even though they're supposed to have uh, – well, Bosa's been banged up, and, you know, uh, Melvin Ingram and all these guys are supposed to be pass rushers, and it's just like, blah. Um, you know, the, the yeah, 40, but if we're going to – Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, and then, the, you know, the 49ers barely squeaked out a victory. The Broncos, how about Derek Carr has like a 90-some percent passer rating. I actually have it. Hold on. I'll pull it up right here. And they still lose the game. He had a um, uh, completion percentage. Hold on. It was something ridiculous. 90.6. Completion percentage wow. twenty nine to thirty two, uh, he hit a touchdown and they lose by a point twenty to nineteen uh, and things are not going good. Zero and two there in the John Gruden era so far in Oakland, soon to be Las Vegas. Well, and they were ahead, so yes. they, they they I mean they lost the game with the other team coming back, so that was definitely an issue. Now, what I was going to say since you were kind of in the Buffalo territory. Vontae Davis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I totally went over my head. I forgot it. <laughs> no, I just, it was just so funny. And I have to tell you, a faux pas I made this morning that really looked, looked bad on me, but I was like, oh, shoot, I can't believe it. You saw the video? Of that, oh that I, well, I mean, that yeah, a, that, that was, was yeah, 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 that was pretty funny. He's just throwing his he's throwing his gear in the back of the car, and it, it, for well, people, hey, we need to explain what happened here. The Bills and Chargers that game goes to halftime. Vontae Davis signs a he's formerly of the Colts cornerback signs a contract with Buffalo in the off season. You know, one of their veteran guys that they have on defense quits the team and announces his retirement, maybe like walking out of the locker room or something like on Instagram or something crazy like yep. that. Just what I, I, can you at least finish the game? <laughs> I, I mean, mean, it's just, it's funny to me because it's, I've never heard that. And they were even talking about it on uh, game day final on, on uh, NFL network afterward. And both um, who was it? Uh, Deion Sanders and also LaDainian Thomas. And they're like, we've never seen that. You at least, Finish even Shannon Sharp. He was like, "Okay, dude, you, you got to finish the game." I, I just don't understand where you're going with that. But the the riff on it by that one comedian that was throwing his stuff in the back, a lot of people thought that was real. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> they speaking it was him. speaking of which, there's another Zane Gonzalez somewhere that's not the Cleveland Browns kicker, and people were just trolling him and making all kind of nasty social media comments at this guy, and he had to go, he had to pull back and and say something to everybody and say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, hey guys, I'm not the Cleveland Browns kicker. I'm just like a a college baseball or softball coach." Living in wherever uh, yeah, high school it was. teacher or something. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. He was like, I'm just, a, it was kind of like when somebody got the name mixed up with that weatherman where he, there was a, a so last year there was some thing, thing as well that happened. And it was like, dude, I'm, I'm a weatherman. I, I, I am not an NFL player. So people are just trolls. I mean, 
um, just in talking about all the social media stuff, you see, I saw some things even on Ben where he went out and he had a mistake free, well, virtually mistake free. He didn't throw any picks, but a mistake free um, game. And he threw over 400 yards, three, you know, touchdowns. He ran for a touchdown. When is the last time we saw that? That was and, impressive. Although I get scared well, every time he carries the ball, that he's going to like but pop he, his shoulder out or something. I know. And he dove for the touchdown. And everything. I mean, I was impressed by it, but then somebody posts, you know what, your time's up, you're washed up. You know, you, uh, you're you just not good offensively anymore. I'm like, what game were you watching? That was a defensive issue, not an offensive issue. So social media, I mean, if we, we have to really talk about it, what do you think about the A-B stuff? Um, hold that thought because that's probably what we're all going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be the big thing. Um, I want to talk about the Steelers game a little bit too, just like your thoughts on it being early. But there's one other uh, there's one other thing we need to talk about. Well, actually, the Steelers opponents coming up. We forgot about Fitz Magic here. Now they're calling him Fitz Magic because he's thrown like what eight touchdowns in two games. Ryan Fitzpatrick, formerly like journeyman, played for every single NFL team you could think of, and now yeah, but he. He's, he looks like Conor McGregor now. Yeah, he's got like gold <laughs> chains and the beard. And um... did you see what he did though? He took that from Deshaun Jackson, and he he was at the podium. He was being funny. He's living his best life right now. He basically the he was punking the media. They're like, so what is this look here? And he goes, well, I just don't think you should let you know success go to your head. And I think you just have to keep being yourself and being real. And they were dying laughing. And one of the media guys goes. So, um, you know, how heavy do you think that one chain is? Because it, it, <laughs> it had a, it had diamonds in it. How many carrots do you think that is? He goes, it's pretty heavy. It's heavy. So then Deshaun Jackson walks in the room, and with with only his pants on and no shirt. He, and, he, and so Fitzpatrick starts busting up laughing. He goes, Oh, you want your stuff back? Sorry, dude. He goes, Yeah, I, I stole this stuff. And he starts laughing his head off. And for the listeners out there that don't even know who Ryan Fitzpatrick is, I mean, he's a 38 year old backup quarterback for Tampa Bay who has a beard that you only see on, you know, Boston Red Sox players. <laughs> and hockey he, hockey he, players during the postseason. Yeah. I mean it's it's long and he had on his his, you know, Ray Ban sunglasses. He had on his shirt buttoned down, hairy chest. He looked like he was out of a seventies disco bad movie. <laughs> and he had on the chains from Deshaun Jackson and everything. And it was the funniest thing you could ever see a like a satin shirt. And I'm telling you, it was it was just hilarious, and um, and he just was couldn't stop laughing at himself. And everybody said, "So what is yours on this whole thing?" He goes, "The chest hair." I was like, "Oh my god!" So it's just people are going to be rooting for him because he's so funny. Well, people like an underdog story. I mean, he. Uh, by the way, he's 35. He's probably hate you for saying he's 38. <laughs> Oh, I thought he was 38. It'll be 36 in November, so just before Thanksgiving. I had to look that I, up, too, because I was like, really? Is he that old? I know he's been around forever, but, yeah, 30, 35, unless Wikipedia is wrong. I mean, they've been known to – he's played for the sorry, Ram, Ryan. Yeah. Rams, Bengals, <laughs> Bills, Titans, Texans, which you may remember that's the game I think Brett Kiesel had. There was like a pick six or two pick sixes. There was like a 21-point swing at the before halftime at Heinz Field. It was, uh, it was a night game. I can't remember if it was like Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night something it was a night game i remember that much and th this was when you know that wasn't that the 0 and 4 season or it was one of yeah that uh, or no uh 2014 well it was still like early it was like when people were all panicking like they are right now then he went over to the jets the jets didn't want to give him any money and he became a backup with the buccaneers Jameis winston suspended now so the wtf out of this aside from his antics is this team before he even did any of this his the head coach who was formerly the offensive coordinator there and, and took over for I forget who it was now that was the head coach uh, at that time. Um, Dirk Cutter uh, offensive was the offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator. Now now I might have it confused because I screwed up all the damn time, so it's okay. But Dirk Cutter was one of the coordinators, and then he's like, you know what? Before the season even starts, he's like, this doesn't necessarily mean that Jameis is gonna is gonna get his job back. And everybody's looking at like, well, this guy's played for like you know this is his seventh NFL team, and he's thirty five years old like you said and he was originally a seventh round draft pick and now look at him now people actually believe it they're probably like they're, they're probably gonna boo if they put Winston in but this uh, is a Nick Foles situation I mean yeah Nick Foles was the MVP of the Super Bowl he but there, there's no question who the 
quarterback is of the Eagles. So people need to stop. When you are a lifelong backup, that's who you are. I, you I know, could, that, that, that's your role. I could only imagine. We're talking about social media. Can you imagine the way people are reacting? New York. The Jets and Giants both lose. Saquon Barkley has something like a 2.8 rushing average because their offensive line is terrible. They lose to the Cowboys. One of their oh, Eli's rivals. getting killed. The, Eli is getting killed. The Fitz Magic, the Buccaneers, they beat the defending Super Bowl champions. You think people are panicking a little bit? Now let's go up to Boston where the New England Patriots, they, they, they lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I know. Maybe it's not I time know. to panic yet. But speaking of the Patriots, before wait, we before on, you before you move on, no, that fits that fits magic. That oh fits yes, magic? yes. Did you hear about the somebody else? Minka, um, basically, Minka, yeah, rookie from the Dolphins. Else got the, uh, yeah, some Mika. Oh, is he's oh he's an athlete. I thought he was like a singer or something. Like, no, no, no. That? He's he's a rookie. He was the first round draft pick for the the Dolphins this year, and uh, and, he and he's trademarking it. Yes, trademarking that that is just rude. What? That's just rude. What a douchebag move, if there ever oh, was one. I just I can't I can't even believe. Well, I think the one other thing that when since we're getting into the social media stuff, um, there was a, a report today, and actually Ben, social media person actually put it out there. <laughs> she said, you're not going to believe this. Somebody said, quote, I wonder how in love they are with Ryan Fitzpatrick over in uh, Tampa Bay, because maybe the Steelers should think about bringing in Winston as our backup. Oh. We have so many backup quarterbacks right now. We don't need, oh my gosh, can you imagine him? We don't, he's not even a, no, well, no, there's no fit there. Speaking of, speaking of that, it was just like, you know, <sighs> Where do I even start with that? There was some idiot, and that's about the best way I could describe him, uh, sitting up. Um, I'm in the lower level of Heinz Field on Sunday, and about five rows back from where the club section starts. So this guy's uh, up above our heads about 10, 15 feet in the first row of the club section, not exactly the cheap seats, sitting there yelling to put Mason Rudolph in and trying to get a chant, put in Rudolph. He wasn't even active in the game he's anymore. Not, like, he yeah. hasn't been active yet. He's the third. St- he's not even the backup quarterback. Are you a moron? Dobbs, I know Dobbs would be the backup. That is just dumb. Very dumb. That is just dumb. That Very just dumb. dumb. I had to, I, I absolutely had to mention that. I also I, I was talking about Boston, and uh, Saturday was the big WTF news. The Browns are going to release Josh Gordon. I know you actually thought they were that he was already released, I but did. they but they pulled back later, either that evening or the next morning. And I saw something across the ticker that said, "Well, wait, 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 wait. N- not just yet. They might actually just trade him now." And there's, I heard a rumor, and I I know you know the rumor of what happened and the reason why they released him. I will not repeat it because it's complete hearsay from a person from a person from another person that's connected or whatever. But right. there's a very specific reason. And if that reason ends up uh, coming to light, he probably won't be with the Patriots very long either. Uh, but the Patriots trading for this guy, all the ridiculousness of these people that are all of a sudden like, whoa, remember Randy Moss, Randy Moss and Tom Brady, Randy Moss, the GOAT, Randy Moss. Yeah, that was Randy Moss. He was. Uh, what, he was I don't, yeah, what I don't get about this, Joe, and, and maybe, maybe you have a different perspective, but – you know, Josh Gordon, even though he does have some raw talent, he's had, you know, substance abuse issues. He's been out of the league a lot for this. He was reinstated and out of it and back. And, ha- you know, he, he's like the he's like the, the brother, you know, of Martavis Bryant. I mean, they just they have this problem. And so I don't understand why Bill Belichick would take that on versus maybe going after like a Des Bryant. Oh, I understand I mean, why. It, why? Money, rookie contract, cheap the talent, they think the risk. They like to take on these reclamation projects when they can. Josh Gordon isn't but a rookie. Well, he's under a rookie contract. That's the difference. Oh. Uh, yeah, he's still under his rookie okay. contract, so he's cheap. Okay. He is cheap okay. for a trade. The Patriots were so far this. down the waiver wire list, they're like next to last because it's the same as the draft order. So yeah. they wouldn't have any shot of getting him from waivers unless every every single team passed on him, and I guess – the rumors were what, like six to eight teams expressed interest, yeah, and so all. they traded a draft pick or whatever. And that much I get. The the reason, the real reason they did it is the receiver group is terrible. Julian Edelman suspended. Chris Hogan has been blah. Um, yeah. They they traded Brandon Cooks away, so they just they have nothing that's gelling there. But going back to the Randy Moss thing, everybody just assumes Josh Gordon's going to be Randy Moss. I remember that comparison when Chad Ochocinco went there, and he was. Yeah. No good. And then 
everybody was thinking the same thing when they grabbed a, another guy that did, remember Michael Floyd who had the DUI he was on the WTF here right. and it's like uh oh the Patriots got him look what they're going to do with him uh, they're grabbing him for the postseason and, and he didn't even play and he was gone and then Kenny Britt the same thing oh well the Cleveland Browns you know what I told everybody then I'm like Kenny Britt you know it's just just because somebody goes to the New England Patriots doesn't mean they automatically become a, a pro bowl or all pro player I understand they have a system there but it takes two to tango and when you have a guy like Josh Gordon who's had all of these problems in his life you don't think all of these other teams like the Cle- the Cleveland Browns have had so much patience he's probably had even more issues than Martavis Bryant has even had he's been he was been in the league longer that's for that's for certain and you know they have people like uh, these organizations, like the Steelers, the Browns. Name name one of the thirty two franchises. They have the resources to help these people out. So they even their agents, their agents. We've had agents on this show in the past, and the agents. These people do everything so these players can all. All they have to do is concentrate on football, and they still find ways to muck it up. See, I didn't swear. Thank you. There. Speaking no, of you didn't. <laughs> mucking it up, we're getting to the Steelers now. Le'Veon Bell on a jet ski asking to get paid. Well, show up and sign your tender, and then you'll start getting checks because right now you've lost one and a half million dollars already, and they can't no, pay. It, they cannot pay you anymore. That passed in July. Like, explain to me what oh. the. Okay, so I know he was on a jet ski, uh, but what do you mean about asking? I mean, is he just is he just out? I mean, somebody said he had an album release uh, party as well for one of his rap crap. I don't, um, you know, you know like, I don't, uh, I, mean, I don't necessarily want to call them rap crap. You know, you got your hobby, you got your thing, or whatever you want to do. But that's a side. First and foremost, you're asking you to be it? paid. You're, <laughs> it's a personal, ta- <laughs> it's a personal taste thing. I'll take the good with the bad. I mean, there's a okay. lot of, there's a lot of other music styles I'm not a big fan of. I'll, I'll put it this way: Do you know of anybody who's come from like an athletic background that's had a successful career as a rapper? I know Shaquille O'Neal tried it and it was garbage. Macho Man Randy Savage. A pro wrestler tried to be a rapper it's just every time it just does not it doesn't mix well it doesn't mix no, well it it, doesn't. It, it's it's no. awful it's awful but i mean tmz got a hold of this he wants it out there he's showboating and gloating and everything else and it's just it's it is now beyond ridiculous and then the people who still continue to keep going it's going to bat for him who was it that said it now was it like I want to say it was like Ike Taylor or Ryan Clark. Yeah, for it, Ike Taylor, I had to actually was it Ike Taylor back at him. Ike Taylor said, "Just pay the man." I'm like Ike, they can't pay him at this point. He's already thrown away almost two million dollars. I said the the time limit's gone. He's tagged. Either sign his tag or not, and just sit out the rest of the year. I go. All he's doing now is biding his time so that he is going to be healthier or less wear on him for his next team. He's doing nothing for the Steelers right now. Nothing. How does so, that how does that look to the next team if there was a next team that well right now this guy doesn't want to play for a team. He doesn't want to do anything because of wear and tear. When when does he get into that mindset now if he is with a new team? Now all of a sudden he's going to be committed to somebody that he's never even played for? Like it's well, such a, a bad message. That. So I have a question on that, and this is, and, and he's like a, he's just like one big WTF to me, I, you know, and, and there's no <laughs> yeah. question, he's, I mean, he's a special player, I mean, there's no question, and if he was just a, what we call a regular running back, I could see other teams going, yeah, don't touch that with a 10-foot pole, but because of who he is, yes, you know, as soon as he's available, there is going to be a team out there, I'm thinking Cowboys are going to pay top dollar for him, but that's just my opinion. Well, I don't know why the, the Cowboys would, they have Ezekiel Elliott, uh, it because, just... The, because he's, Ezekiel Elliott's not... Le'Veon Bell but I think that's just an opinion but I think the biggest thing for Le'Veon Bell (laughs) is the fact that he is he he just he he just doesn't get it he doesn't he's not understanding the dynamics and for for him not to understand the Pittsburgh way I mean Heinz Ward came out and said it who's the guy that um that held out He's on ESPN now. Okay, his, his name is um, leaving me. He was on ESPN. Good morning, but he he was um, shoot. He said he held out for like three games or whatever, and he was a Steeler. And he's like, he goes, they don't budge. <laughs> he's like, they do not budge. Not Rod but Woodson, was, was it? I think it was. Yes, yes, that's who it was. I mean, and that's just that's like, getting back to when I was a kid. So I mean, I only yeah, know I only like, know the stories I hear or read, but I missed that little segment with that. It was on Sunday and, and before pregame, and and he was saying something about it, and then um, another guy was saying something, and Heinz Ward's come out and said, and, and Charlie Batch, he's Charlie's like, 
Lev, I don't know what you're doing because it, it's just not going to happen. He's like that you've been, you've passed the time frame. You know, this is where it is right now. But here's what the other thing that Lev's doing. So the guy that left at halftime in Buffalo, he and he put it out there on social media that he retired. He liked it. Okay, then we get into now. It's time to talk about the. Are we going to talk about the game or the AB? Well, I was, I was going to mention the one more thing about the Bell thing that people say: pay the man or or trade him or oh, we should have paid him. Uh, you know, like that yeah. would solve like all the Steelers' oh, woes right it now. Wouldn't. He's still a distraction, regardless. It, even if they traded him, and I was trying to explain this to somebody who didn't know the situation, it's the same thing as that Josh Gordon deal. It's the same contract. Now, Josh Gordon could be extended or reworked into a new deal. I don't know why any team would want to risk that at this. point point and you know he's not going to do anything unless he gets that guaranteed money and that's kind of the crux of this whole Le'Veon Bell thing but I mean geez the deal the deal he was given was like two for two in the first two years the reported deal was like I think two years 33 million dollars over the first three years it was 45 million I forget what it went up to like 60 million 70 million somewhere I think his guarantees were low I think that's his issue but he would have gotten paid and he was guaranteed like 14 and a half this season the highest paid running back and he's sitting out, not collecting paychecks. Even if he signs his tender and demands a trade, guess what? The next team, it's still that July 16th deadline. It's this franchise tag that is like, it has a spell on it and it cannot be broken until the until the new business year starts next year. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, giving him some bad, inf- some bad advice. Oh, ter- he's terrible he's advice. Well, we saw the agent for Antonio Brown come out. We're just going to skip the Steelers' loss. WTF. There, that's good enough, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think the rant on the sideline um, is getting old. I mean, I love Antonio Brown. He follows me on social media. He's he. I think he's a talented player. And personally, I don't think we're the team we are without him. Just like we're not the team we need to be without Bell. I I, I truly believe that. Unfortunately, but I think AB needs to shut out the noise. I have a question and, for you. I have yes. a question for you in regard to that because you saw it live and on TV. I'm in the stands, and when I'm rewatching this, I'm rewatching condensed game and watching all 22 coaches film. So I'm not watching the like you know, three, four hour broadcast because I mean, like nobody got time for that. Fast forward through commercials. It's still like, you know, three hours practically. How'd that look? Because was that, was that the play where he come off the field and took his helmet off? Was that one? Okay. He comes off. Yeah. And he goes to the side and how it looked on TV was that he was arguing with the offensive coordinator. Basically, if you read lips at all, he basically was saying something to the effect that what it looked like was, um, you know, I'm available. I'm open get me the ball. And that's what he was saying. And, you know, Ben even addressed that on his radio show where he just said, you know, he's just frustrated. Which is what it looked. Well, this is what my observation was. And I believe this is when they brought in Rosie Nixon, the jumbo package. And I'm like, whoa, they're taking AB off the field. And I pull out my binoculars. I may have mentioned this on the other podcast. And uh, just to, just to go over this one more from my perspective, I'm on the sealer side of the bench. I pull out the binoculars to get a closer look, and which is awesome, by the way. It's like I'm almost like sitting right there. And he starts to walk off the field. I'm watching the way he walks because my concern was is that he's injured. And he did. Because he's walking slow. That's what the he, media he was. was. He was walking. He was walking. It looked a little gingerly. And then he takes off his helmet. I'm like, oh no. So I'm waiting to see if any trainers are coming by. I'm scanning, I'm scanning the sidelines over there. Daryl Drake, the um, wide receivers coach, puts his arm over his shoulder. And it wasn't like he threw his arm off or anything like that. They looked like they were just talking. It looked like he was consoling, patted him on the back or something. He goes and sits on the bench. That's the extent of what I saw. I didn't saw Randy Fickner or anybody else go over there or any other type of argument. So I'm like, where's everybody getting this? Give me the ball type thing. Maybe he's upset because I think that was like one, if not the only snap he came off the field for. You're getting your butt kicked by the Kansas City Chiefs. You're the probably the best wide. I'm not. Even, I'm sorry. Did I say probably? You are the best wide receiver yeah. in the National Football League, and you're coming off the field. It has to be frustrating. Put yourself in his shoes. It's not necessarily yeah. being selfish. Is can you imagine? Is, this is a guy. We just got done talking about Le'Veon Bell. This is a right. guy who's had multiple. He's had failed drug tests. He's been caught with the DUI with the marijuana possession thing. Uh, don't hold injuries against him, but you know Antonio Brown, healthy, almost always available, and Bell hasn't. But again, I won't hold that against him. But it's just to put 
put into perspective of how much more time Antonio has put in. He's been on the team a lot longer. He hasn't beaten on any like women or children or ha- had any substance abuse or or PEDs or like Nothing. held out he's, held he's out a just, training yeah, camp or okay Rolls Royce driving into training camp or something like that like these helicopter. these little stunts helicopter um dancing with the stars you know what everybody loved when Heinz Ward was doing this type of stuff and would go out there and play and nobody you know why it's because not everybody can uh spout their potty mouth on Twitter and try and sound like a hot shot like a ver- like a former employee of the Pittsburgh Steelers did who was one yeah. of the underlings with the PR department PR department people who I get along with very well and speak to often and very grateful for the things that they do for not only myself, but all of us here at Steel City Underground. I want to say that very specifically because this person is a former per, former employee. Not even he lost the job the year before. And because I was following him for quite some time, because he was formerly he was with the PR department, and some of the hot takes that were coming out even last year, I said, this is quite odd for a guy who professionally worked with these animals athletes under the same roof as part of the same organization. I can't, I couldn't imagine saying some of these things unless of course you had some ax to grind on uh, about the way that you exited uh, or, or left or anything like that. There's definitely something else to that situation. Ben blew it off. Oh, I used to get along with them. We used to joke around with them. Of course, Ben's not going to say anything bad. And even though I think he did throw like somebody under the bus in his interview, but I, I'm not going to go there. I might be reading in the things there the same way people are reading about Antonio Brown not being at quote work on Monday because they didn't have a practice. Okay. They had like a team meeting. It could have been excused. Remember there was one time where he didn't show up for something training camp or practice or something everybody freaked freaked out they thought i think it was the beginning of training camp the previous year they thought he was holding out for a new contract and he went to go see the birth of one of his kids he has a lot of them and it's like it could be any small little thing like this with a team meeting was it excused was it not excused immediately some of these people that are on uh, some of these beat writers are making assumptions about things is that not the most dangerous thing to do as a journalist is to assume something you think he's going to you think these guys are going to retract it when we find out in a day or two that it was absolutely nothing or if it was something and then Mike Tomlin handles it like a coach or the organization handles it like they should uh, now what do you say why would you it's just you know the pressure and the things but personally knowing this guy I could see why Antonio Brown said what he said and this guy is basically throwing all of his accomplishments under the bus in a public realm on social media, subtweeting him because he didn't even have enough guts to tag him. Unless, of course, Antonio already had him blocked or something because, like I said, potty mouth, his takes are just absolutely horrible. Some of the things that we were saying just shock me coming from this type of realm. And... um Antonio had enough, and he says, you know what? If you really think that, that, that Big Ben should get all the credit for everything that I've ever accomplished, then uh, have them trade me and see what I could do with another team. Basically, he's saying, yeah, I could do this with maybe even with Fitzmagic at this point. Let's be honest. Um, that's what he was saying. Everybody else is like, well, we're only going to read the part. We're only going to take this the way we want to see it. And we're going to say, oh, oh, he yelled on the sidelines. Oh, now he wants traded. No, they got rid of the guy that wanted to be traded. And then the other guy that wants to get paid won't show up for his paycheck. This guy is pretty straight and narrow. And I'll take 11 of them any day versus some of these other jokers and pretenders that uh, they say they want to play football, but they're more interested in doing other things that end up really harming their teammates well <laughs> tell you <laughs> tell me how you really rant. feel joe tell me yes, how you really I'm feel still here so shout out <laughs> to david who said he wanted to hear me on here for three hours sorry not gonna happen this week <laughs> no not this week <laughs> when joe gets going he forgets i'm on the phone but that's okay <laughs> i think ab just needed to shut it down he just I, I, you know they were saying it was funny k adams on good morning football she goes let me see if ab follows him no nope, he doesn't i don't know how she figured that out so fast um, but it was just like, she's like, I don't even know why he gave him the time of day, but for him to come out and say something like that, you know, just basically AB should thank his lucky stars. And AB's really comment was, you know, trade me, let's see. And all you have to say 
is trade me and the Twitter universe and social media universe explodes. Wait a and second. It was a, and it turned out being a story, and it wasn't. You don't even have to say that. Le'Veon Bell, when the Steelers had the tie. And he liked it, by the way. He at, liked it. Way. Le'Veon Bell, after, yeah, it just, I try to ignore him. He's He is a, like an elite level troll on social media. He, he really is. All he posted was the emoji with the little spy eyeglass, the little monocle, after the tie with the Cleveland Browns. And everybody blew up on that one emoji. You don't even oh, have no, to say anything it, else. Well, and he, I think the thing that bugged me is the fact that that to me looks like he's just sitting there, you know, sitting back while everybody else is working their butt off to try to win a game. And he's like, oh, I was just saying I've never seen a tie before. I'm like, okay, well, say it in your head. You don't need to be on social media. You know, to me, that's like somebody who's sitting at work pretending to work, but they're really on their Facebook page. It's like you, if you, you're not you're not working right now, so nobody cares what you think right now. You're supposed to be at work. You've decided to take an extended vacation for no other thing but self serving. But I feel bad for AB. I think didn't his um, agent even come out and say it's a non story? Oh yeah, I could find the whole thing with the agent, but it's going to take me a second. But yes, he no, says that's it's, okay. He just came out and said it was. Nothing. It's a non story. We retweeted it. If you're really interested, it's over on the Twitter. It's Steel City under Gur. Uh, that's the way I feel with the Gurr. And uh, you know what? Actually, I do hope Bell was sitting back and watching the game, so at least he's paying attention and watching the offensive formations and taking some notes with film and that, so when he does decide to show up and collect a paycheck or whatever. And you said, you know what? He's an exceptional talent, and he would help the Steelers. I have no bones about that. I just, I'm not exactly sold on the way he's handling his business. This is uncharted waters uh-huh. for pretty much any any pro football player ever in history, and it's just, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't quite understand it. And um, you know what? It, it's another thing with the social media stuff. It, it, you know, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Sometimes I could see snapping back. Um, you know what? The the guy who made the comment didn't even have all that many Twitter followers. People are actually making fun of him. They even call him a fan. They don't even realize they used to work uh, in any capacity with the team. And I imagine when you say things like you say in public about players like that, it's probably why he doesn't have a job anymore. Though that might not be true either. I shouldn't make assumptions. I just went on a rant about that. But uh, well, I think what's funny is that Bill Cowher said something pretty funny over the weekend. Um, since he's now in the media booth or whatever on the CBS, he, he said, you know, one thing you guys have to understand, he goes, when I coached, he goes, I had to do things like tell Joey Porter not to say anything to the other team before the game. He goes, meaning in an interview, he goes, that was it. He goes, and then I'd have to go up to a coach and say, yeah, sorry about that. He goes, we didn't deal with social media back in the day. He goes, I would hate to be a coach now because you have to watch everything your players are doing everything everybody's saying. He's like, it is like babysitting 101. And I was like, that is hilarious because it's true. Yeah, I just – I don't get – I mean, I understand that people like turn on these athletes like – and to snap of your fingers because, you know what, they're making millions of dollars. They're under the spotlight. When you're one of the most popular players in the NFL, one of the, the best in the NFL, that spotlight's even bigger. The microscope is on you even finer, and every move you make will be scrutinized. I mean, if this was somebody else, if this was like Rosie Nix or somebody that went over on the bench, the cameras might not even catch it. But there's cameras everywhere. There's microphones everywhere. You have yeah. to – you know, you have to be careful about it. I've mentioned before that I officiate sports, collegiate level, even that. There, all these games are on like ESPN3 or ESPN Plus, and there's microphones and cameras. And you have to be careful even in that venue about not only what you say or do in your actions, obviously, but what the players say or do because they, you know, they don't want things like vulgarity or swearing. There's kids around, small ears, television, censorship, things like that. And these cameras could catch, you know, uh, some young college player saying F this or something. So, you can only imagine how much bigger that is in the National Football League on a Sunday uh, where, you know, the cameras are going to be pointed at a few guys no matter what. And you got, you know, you got to be careful because what happens is, is people take a perception and then that perception becomes reality. And the one other that I don't want to ignore, and Ben talked about this too, like a lot of these guys that are coming up, they're younger, they've grown up with social media, they've had it their whole lives. Ben doesn't mess around with it. He has somebody that manages it for him. He could afford to do that, you know. Um, 
But like Bud Dupree drops into somebody's direct messages, and if it is, if it's fake or not, I, I don't know because I proved that you could fake that really quick. I uh, actually yeah. doctored a message from our Tina Rivers that said something about loving llamas and alpacas and starting an alpaca farm, and it's not real because it's photo completely photoshopped. So uh, whether it's I get marriage proposals all the time through DM, and <laughs> well, like dudes, not I'm from Bud du- not from not from Bud Dupree, and not yet, no. And, and there's so many people that <laughs> Bud Dupree is so like closely linked to like. Jarvis Jones, who in fact is a was not NFL material as a first round draft pick, uh, or as people say, a bust, which I think is a very derogative term towards anybody. You know, you made it to that stage, you had to have done something to get there. But uh, I think Bud Dupree catches just some of that guilt by association of being an outside linebacker drafted in the first round. Is you know is he an All Pro, Pro Bowl guy? Do you know all of these different things? No, but you know what? He doesn't absolutely stink to the point where he was benched and inactive either, like Jarvis Jones was. And you got people that go and attack these guys like that. And I made a comment about some of the guys that seem to always draw the ire of Steelers fans, and almost it's like always the first round picks. Oh, you, we need we need another pass rusher, so they go and get Bud Dupree. Well, not that pass rusher. Oh, we need a cornerback. Uh, not that corner back meaning Artie Burns and it's going to be Terrell Edmonds sooner or later like if he misses a tackle like he did the whole team was a complete epic fail on the defensive side of the ball it collapsed these things happen I remember talking this same way you and I at three and two after week five were been through five picks and two pick sixes against the Jacksonville Jaguars and everyone thought oh Jacksonville Jaguars they stinketh for years so we automatically automatically should be victorious and it's like, that's not how any of this works. Now you look yeah. at the Jacksonville Jaguars and just beat the Patriots. Uh, right. So you think people in Boston are panicking about it? Or, oh, I know everybody's yeah. going to say this is the thing. Tom Brady yells, well, he has five Super Bowl rings. That doesn't make it any different. You know what I think? Anytime a wide receiver says something, it's like a wide receiver is always selfish because they have to rely on the quarterback to give them the ball. But the quarterback runs all the plays as the huddles is like the team leader, definitely on the offensive side of the ball. So if Ben Roethlisberger says something you know what there was still drama you know he says something or whatever to Haley but nobody gives Ben the flack on that it was always oh it's Todd Haley but when the team starts off so stinky and goes three and out what two drives in a row uh, yeah, they actually had the other one, and then Boz missed the field goal, and then you know they fall flat at certain points. It's like, th- where's the blame go now that Todd Haley was gone? I made a smart, you know, Alec comment about the hashtag Fire Haley stuff I used to see all last year. Of course, now it's Fire Tomlin, Fire Keith Butler, Fire everybody else. It's just like you know what? Sometimes teams have bad games. It was hot outside there. It was hot outside in Chicago last year. These things do occur. Uh, the Chiefs did not make a single. Mistake mistake you couldn't pro- you could probably play no more mistake free football than they did aside from a safety aside from a fumble and you know what they already had a cozy lead at that point uh you know it's this type of stuff instead on monday or tuesday you're asking the head coach you're asking the quarterback on radio shows and press conferences about some comment about a retort about some internet troll and i think it's all just ridiculous everything is gonna you know what we, we may be in week six or seven and and come back and laugh at all of this just the same way they did when they ripped off the win streak last year. Yeah, I think I, I just think it was a bad game. Let's hope it is. Let's hope we refocus for this week. We're going down to Tampa Bay. I'm going to go hang out with uh, Fitzmagic and, and, you know, his hairy chest and the whole bit. I think just to end on the last note of WTF for this week was what Kim uh, Hayward was saying in his locker room yes. that after the game he went to Cheesecake Factory and his waitress was a, was a Chiefs fan and she kept just going on and on about how glad she was they they won the game and didn't realize who he was so he was like what the not a clue his wife I think was it was quoted his wife said something I don't think she knows who you are <laughs> just, yeah uh... exactly so I, I I feel bad for him but that's I think that's what wrapping it up for the WTF this week. Absolutely. So thank you, Miss Terry, for uh, joining me once again. All right. Thank you for having me. Yep. And folks, um, having fun with some of the YouTube comments as well. Hey, thank you. Most of you have actually been like quite polite and uh you know, it's just with these things when we think about the athletes, it's like some they deserve some 
privacy, I guess, especially when things in their private life occur that don't need to be public information. And then just be respectful. Have a modicum of, you know, a shred of integrity when it comes to these things. Don't go out there and just scream at them. It's like somebody tried to, like, say, oh, well, I I asked them the same question. If I came into your job yelling about your job performance from the day before, you know, if I was on Twitter just blasting you about not completing a project or doing something, oh, well, you could say whatever you want. Yeah, okay. I would love to see because when it happens, you know pretty darn well it's very hard to bite your tongue. I think everybody gets a little defensive on things like that. So just put yourself in everyone else's shoes, and especially us. There are some people who think we are the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like I was out there throwing passes and you were tackling people, Terry. Or maybe you were kicking field goals. I don't know what you prefer, <laughs> Pun- punting the ball. There might be a job for that open if you want to try. But, uh, yeah, I mean – that's that's the thing you know what i mean it's it's just like nah i i think you know for the most part these guys handle everything pretty well and it gets to be pretty tough because it, it's an emotional game it's an emotion let's put it this way if it's got your emotions yelling at players just think about how they feel yeah exactly it, it, i just think that they have a really tough job and then not trying not to you know try to block the noise out but then trying to um you know respond or be happy and after a loss is really tough so Hopefully we'll get it together this next week. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm hopefully looking forward to it. It's never easy. There's never a game where I don't have anxiety at some point. It's just like, could just go out there and like lay 40 points on somebody. It actually happened last year with the Titans. So it's like, let's put 40 on somebody and hope they don't put 41. It's like the guy who bids $2 on the prices right after somebody already bid the dollar and thinks they have it in the bag. So <laughs> all right. exactly. All right, Terry, seriously, we should get going. So until next time, folks, my name's Joe. Her name's Terry. Be safe. Be good. We'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 